Hi everyone, it's Jonathan here from Tradewise. Welcome back to another monthly update video. And wow, it's been an incredible month. Uh, there's been all sorts happening in the markets, all sorts happening in crypto land. I also wanna talk this month a little bit about uh, about AI and the impact it's already having in my life and the impact I think it's gonna have in you know the world in general, but also bringing it back into the investment world as well. There's a huge amount to cover in this video, so I'm just gonna jump straight into it. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. But without further ado, let's get into it. Please read the disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor and nothing in this video should be taken as financial advice. The content in this video is for general information purposes only. Please make sure you do your own due diligence and if necessary, seek independent professional advice. Thank you. Right then, so it's been a bit of a crazy month really, I think, in the month of June. People have been talking about the old adage of sell in May and go away and how we're coming into the bearish time of year, which I think traditionally it has been seasonality suggests that the summertime is not a great time for trading and investing. I think a lot of people were expecting uh, Bitcoin to, to soften and for the price to go somewhat sideways, if not slightly down. But actually what's happened is we've had a very strong rally and Bitcoin has shown time and time again, I think this year, just how resilient it can be. And of course, it is way down from, um, from its previous highs. Of course, it's had a, a massive pullback. But it's not done what a lot of people thought it would do, which is, you know, to keep retesting the lows. It's, it's stayed in the in the 20s and, and now we're actually above 30,000. And this is despite the intensifying war on crypto that's happening in the US. You know, there's been some really uh, damaging, harmful activity, I suppose you might say, in the month of June with actions against really quite a shopping list of tokens, really, uh, that have, are being declared as securities. The regulators just don't seem content with going after the odd token here and there. They're now sweeping across a number of, of top tokens and they've even started to take legal action against Binance and Coinbase. And so it just seems like the US really taking on as much of the crypto space as possible, trying to, I think, delay things more than anything. Um, they're not. It's not necessarily a ban, but they're definitely trying to suppress uh, crypto growth and, and stifle the the growth and innovation that's happening, and so you might have thought that Bitcoin, you know, will would be performing badly. Indeed, some altcoins have performed badly. If you look at Polygon, for example, Polygon lower now than it was back in December. So it's had it had a bit of a run, but it's given all of that uh, back and is looking really quite weak. But if you compare that to the Bitcoin chart, you know, Bitcoin has held up much more firmly. And the reason that Bitcoin has held up so strongly. Uh, and been so resilient just particularly in the last uh, week or so is because of the news of a spot ETF and it looks pretty certain that BlackRock are going to get a spot ETF for Bitcoin and that is massive massive news it's actually I think it's actually going to have such a big impact I don't think this rally even signifies really just how huge this will be because to get you know these huge rallies that we've had in the past we get you know huge huge run-ups huge gains what you need is a lot more liquidity coming into the market i think that retail have obviously been the driving force in the past for for these huge cycles uh, i think the next one will be driven more so by institutional monies which is wonderful for the sector because you know you're not just talking millions of dollars of new money you're not even talking billions you're talking potentially trillions of dollars being able to flow into the market which will be the driving force for the next uh, bull market um, all being well you know this will be in sort of late 2024 into 2025 i think the stars are aligning beautifully really for a really really strong pump in bitcoin and that then tends to filter through to the altcoins market as well it just feels like everything's coming together nicely with you know around the time of the halvings i think hopefully inflation will be under control and perhaps even interest rates being lowered again then you've got the possibility of the money printing commencing and, and i think all these things are starting to come together at a similar kind of time and all of them should be very very bullish for the crypto space in general but but definitely for bitcoin and so there's still plenty of kind of negative sentiment around. And, and as I say, you know, the US just seems to be at, at war with crypto right now, even though I, I, th I think the, the ETF was offered as a kind of compensation to the crypto market just so that they can say, well, we're not totally against crypto. Um, you know, look what we're doing with, with Bitcoin. 
I think they, they really have a problem with everything else except Bitcoin and they can't ban it so they're just trying to, to stifle it um, in the short term. The only thing that makes me a little bit cautious is that now everyone's feeling very, very bullish and that alone makes me think that perhaps we'll see the price drop a little bit over the next few weeks and months but at the same time there is still, there is a fair amount to be optimistic about and I certainly feel confident that, that the worst is behind us in terms of, of the lows. It might still be a bit bumpy but I think we can start to build a platform now uh, and you know things will be looking much more optimistic over the next sort of 12 months. Okay, so I want to talk just for a couple of minutes about AI and I'll show you just some some of this wonderful AI generated art um, while while I'm speaking. You know, this is kind of blown me away a little bit what's happened over the last 6 7 months. The advancements that have happened in chat GPT in particular, I'm now using it daily um, for improving my efficiency and, and having it as like my my personal assistant essentially. And I really feel as though the world has changed over the last few months and this is going to be very, very, very disruptive and it's also going to be a threat and an opportunity in kind of equal measure. I'm not going to sort of be, you know, all doom and gloom about it. Overall, I'm optimistic about AI. I want to talk more about the opportunities that it presents. And, you know, for me, I just think it's, it's going to massively increase productivity, boost efficiency, and it's going to touch every aspect of our lives. And I, and I just... I don't think people have fully cottoned on to just how impactful this has been. The world the world for me has changed now. And I think it's important that people just understand just how significant uh, this all is. And of course, I want to look at the opportunities from an investing and a trading point of view. But there's also a huge amount of opportunity for business opportunity um, and so on with, with all of this. I'm also interested to hear how you're using it and, what, and how you plan to implement it. So let me know what's going on in your world with AI because I'm, I'm super interested in, in the whole conversation and the whole topic. So do let me know um, how you're using AI and, and where you see AI going in the future. But the way I'm looking at this, you know I've been a, a huge fan of the Web3 space and crypto. And you know my channel has drifted more and more into crypto, whereas it started more about Forex and and stock trading and things like that. You know, Web three for me is just a natural evolution from you know you, originally we had Web one, then Web two. The social aspect of it being Web two, then Web three is more about ownership and decentralization. And I just feel like it's been a natural evolution, and it's disruptive, of course, and it's changing the kind of landscape and the way we use the internet. But AI is. An entire paradigm shift for me it's not just like an evolution of one thing to another it's an entirely new era that we've now found ourselves in whereby we're no longer or soon soon not to be the most intelligent sort of species on the planet and we're going to have this tool which will be very very useful to us but will we also will have to live alongside something that can outthink us and outperform us in just about anything and that is just going to have such a huge impact on our lives. I think that we're, we're about to see uh, huge advancements in absolutely every aspect of our lives. And most of that will be will be positive. But I'm just not sure we're, we're even ready for, for the change. I heard one expert saying that we're coming into an exponential age now. And he's actually expecting that we will advance as, as humanity by about 20,000 years worth of advancement as a civilization in just the next 100 years. It's hard even to get your head around what that will look like, but such a massive, massive step forward in such a short space of time, it is going to be both exciting and challenging and terrifying all, all at the same time. Now, at the moment, the AIs that are available are, I think, superb for uh, improving efficiency. And most businesses are already looking at how they can become more profitable, more efficient by, by utilizing AI. And it does put a lot of jobs at threat. If you think about, let's say like, well, any, any kind of knowledge-based jobs, I think, you know, let's take lawyers, for example, really where lawyers earn their money is, is through knowledge of the legal system that, you know, they spend years and years learning the legal system and then they monetize uh, that knowledge and can charge a premium for doing so. But these large language models and things like ChatGPT, I mean, ChatGPT has already passed the bar exam, which is insane to think about the fact that this is something that's only just been really widely talked about in the last few months. And not only did it pass, but it also scored in the top 10%, which is absolutely insane. And although, you know, like articles like this do go on to say that actually it's not, it, does, it, does it really matter? Is it hugely important? I think for the time being, it's not 
immediately going to uh, to to replace like all lawyers for example definitely in a lot of these kind of service based jobs experience accounts for a lot and there is something to be said for the fact that you know it's not just about the knowledge it's also about uh, the experience that you gather over decades of working in a sector that, that actually is, is priceless but currently these are general models that are being used and it only takes let's say for example five lawyers get together that each have 30 years of experience in law they could sit sit down and they could pour that knowledge into an ai pretty pretty quickly you know within a matter of a few weeks really they could train that ai um, in such a way that it actually takes on board their experience and if you've got five people with 30 years worth of experience then in theory that ai then has 150 years worth of combined experience and expertise of course as well as all the the knowledge and again in theory has more experience than any human could possibly have because there aren't lawyers with 150 years worth of experience and so i think this is where it's going in the short term is that we'll get much more kind of specific and, and targeted ais uh, in different sectors and people will be finding ways of giving these ai models their own experience and their own kind of expertise and their own slant on things because they already have the knowledge so once you've already got all of the knowledge you know that that's a, that's a huge starting point once you've got that textbook understanding and then and then it's about how you give them the expertise and the experience that, that you gather over years and years in the trenches but again it is just that is just knowledge and i think that um whilst whilst sometimes it can be a bit intangible there will be people that will figure out how to relay all that experience and expertise into a more specific ai model so on the one hand of course that's that's a bit of a threat to the kind of uh, the economy that we are all accustomed to but there's also huge opportunities and i do hear a lot of people saying that you won't get replaced by ai in your job you'll probably get replaced by someone using ai and i think that's the way that all of this is going definitely in the short term at least anyway because it does need some manual input but what about the opportunities of it? Obviously, you can talk about the negatives of it. But, you know, I, I see, for example, on the investing side, there's a great opportunity here for a an AI model to, to be our co-pilot when we're investing, to take that emotion out, to have more knowledge of investing than we could probably um, consume in our lifetimes without, you know, investing huge, huge, huge amounts of time. It already has the knowledge for investing it's just about tweaking and adapting that to your own investment strategy and so this is something i'm definitely going to be looking at over the next few months i've already got my eye on some ai trading models they're, they're very early in their development and you know people have been throwing around the phrase ai as far as like trading bots and things goes for quite some time now but actually they're not ais that they're using that they are just still an algorithm they're not able to um, adapt or to you know employ critical thinking and so on but that is where you know ai will will come into the investment world where it can actually learn from its mistakes and it can improve so it actually gets better over time without even human intervention so i'm really excited by that in my own industry um, you know i've been in digital marketing for uh, over 10 years now as i've as i've mentioned i've been using chat daily now in my day-to-day -day work activities and it's massively increased my efficiency i'm also looking at potentially putting out a um, a course that will allow small businesses to benefit from ai by simply in-housing really their their marketing because marketing is something that all businesses need, but it can be extremely expensive, particularly in the SEO space, for example, companies can pay thousands of dollars per month. But again, really what they're paying for is, is the knowledge and expertise. And now it can be done for an absolute fraction of the cost and it can be done in-house. So that's something that I'm looking at uh, as a way to, to show businesses how to use AI to, uh, to, to get significant amounts of new business in without it being a significant cost. And it's something that you can either learn as a business owner or you can pass to a member of the team just to make sure that you, you're staying ahead of the competition and getting as much traffic as you can from sources like Google without it being a, a huge uh, cost to the business. And if you're not sure, you know, if AI can help you or you're not really sure of, of how it can help you, then just ask it, you know, uh, let's go to ChatGPT. Why should people use AI in their everyday lives? Well, you know, increasing efficiency, personalized experiences is a really interesting one. Improved productivity, of course, that's what I've been talking mostly about. Enhanced safety and security, which obviously a lot of people talk about it being 
AI itself being a security flaw, but it can actually uh, have a positive impact there. Advanced healthcare solutions, I think this is gonna be a big one, a huge one in, in terms of impacting our daily lives. All I think all science will will improve, but but definitely healthcare is one that I think we're we're, we're on the the precipice of some massive leaps forward in healthcare. Um, smarter homes and cities is quite an interesting one, and innovative entertainment experiences as well. So if you haven't already tried ChatGPT, go along, give it a try. I, I highly recommend it to you. I'm super super excited by you know where this is going to take us. I choose to be optimistic, and one of the main reasons I choose to be optimistic about AI is firstly because I can see the opportunities immediately kind of for me and, and for my life. And partly I'm optimistic because there's just no point in being pessimistic about it. There's no point worrying about uh, things that are kind of out of your control. If this does turn out to be the end of humanity, which I seriously doubt, um, then worrying about it is not going to, to change the outcome. But I think the real reason that I'm optimistic about it is because although that there are ways, of course, that you can use this for bad and it's the same with the internet you know there's definitely been a lot of negatives to the internet but overall it's been a very positive thing and that is because there is just more incentive and there's more people willing to be using it for good than than for bad and, and i think as long as we've got that that balance you know you know looking at say security for example you know you could say well ai's now will make it easier for for, for hacking and, and it will create lots of new security issues and flaws etc okay fine but there'll be industries that emerge to counter that and, and they will have more incentive and there'll be more people backing that side of it. So as long as overall, you know, humanity remains positive and there's incentive for uh, for the status quo to be maintained rather than for, for chaos to ensue, then there will always be that strong counter to, to any negative impact that can come about from AI. And so I hope you're using AI already. If not, I hope I've given you um, some ideas. I'm so excited by the technology that, that I'm, I'm, I may well be putting out some content on use cases for it. I'm certainly going to be looking out for the investment side and for, for, for trade-wise ways that I can optimize and improve my trading and investment strategies. Maybe it can be my research partner for finding low-cap crypto gems, for example. Maybe I'll have it attached to, to charts and looking for entry and exit signals on trading. You know, the possibilities are endless just within the trading arena. But I, I really wanted just to, to set the scene really of just how broad ranging it is. It's definitely not just something, a, a tool for, for making money specifically. It is going to completely revolutionize our lives across the board. And so that's why I've just jumped in. And I hope you're all at least jumping in or, to, or, or dipping your toe in the water at least <laughs> to to this new new technology and uh, I'm trying to see how it can benefit you. All right, now let's get on with the normal monthly update and we'll start with Gala Games because there's always a lot going on with Gala Games. I mentioned in last month's update that there's kind of been a bit of negative sentiment. I mean, there's, there's always negative sentiment in, in any kind of community. You never can completely avoid it, but I felt like some of the, the bigger influencers had uh, kind of turned a bit against Gala and certainly for the case of on-chain gaming he just seems to be extremely frustrated and disappointed with Gala Games he lost his sponsorship and I think he felt like and he doesn't seem to be taking it all that well to be honest and some of the things he's saying are of course justified but I think that a lot of what he's saying is fueled by emotion and, and I think that he went from being euphoric about the the ecosystem to now really seeming to to hate on the ecosystem and I think he just went from from you know being emotionally attached from a, in, in a positive way and just being purely just euphoric all the time to now uh, the complete opposite really and, and I hope he'll land somewhere in between really over the next few weeks and months and we'll just kind of take the emotion out of it and just look at it from a more rational perspective because you know nothing is always all good or all bad I'm always look at both sides of the coin and you know for gala games there's I see an awful lot of positive but wherever I see negatives I, I kind of highlight them as I go along I'm just trying to remove that emotional attachment as much as I possibly can really to to give a more balanced overview and I, and I hope on chain gaming can kind of do do the same I also hope he gets a bit more of love back for the ecosystem and for the project because there's an awful lot to be positive about but of course there are always uh, some negatives as well now, these monthly updates that have been going on with Bitbender have been really, really interesting. I've watched them all, and what I'm going to try and keep doing is I'll stay on top of all of the updates and report back you know, to you guys on a monthly basis, as I've, as I've always done, really, just to try and save you guys the time to stay on top of it all, because there is a lot happening. There's always 
um, a lot of news and progress being made. And it does often seem like it's such a big ecosystem now, it's kind of difficult to, to stay on top of it all. Some of the big news that came out this month for Gala was the name of Gala Chain. And you're not going to believe what the name of Gala Chain is. This is absolutely incredible. We've been waiting months and months. Be, it's been a well kept secret. What are they going to call it? You know, they've said they've got a name for it. Well, the name, here we go, drum roll, please. The name of Gala Chain is going to be Gala Chain, which is just, it must have taken them months to come up with that name um i'm only joking basically they they had other names and they had one name in particular that they'd that they were kind of happy with uh, basically when you translate it into another language it meant something potentially offensive i think it meant something like aryan or something like that so they kind of had to put that uh, put that name to bed and they've just decided look it's too too difficult to try and find a different name it's going to be gala chain personally i'm in favor i think it always should have been gala chain because that is the brand and you want people always referring to the brand for me all things should lead back to that name of gala i know there's gala games there's gala film etc uh you know gala chain itself is the idea is that it's a kind of a separate entity even to gala games but I think, uh, personally, I think it's a good thing to stick with the branding across the entire ecosystem. And of course, you've got the Gala coin, which will be the gas token for the Gala chain anyway. So having a Gala token with a different name for the chain, just I just don't think it makes much sense. Now, something I know you guys are going to be interested in is the some of the price prediction conversation that's been going on in the month of June for Gala. And um, it was kicked off really by this video on BitBoy Crypto, obviously one of the biggest channels in cryptocurrency. This, this video had 38,000 views and it was a, basically a Gala price prediction. Now, these guys go about it, I think, in, in quite a good way, you know, that they're trying to look at a, a number of factors around market cap and token emissions and, you know, looking at where the price was in its last all-time highs, whether it will get back to new all-time highs. Obviously, the circulating supply is hugely important because the more token emissions you have, the harder it is for a price to, to get back to its all-time highs and so on. So, so they go through this whole method, mathematical calculations and around halvings and circulating supply and stuff like that. I think they have a fairly robust model to some extent, and they came out with a calculation that Gala would be going to around 13 to 18 cents. That is at the peak of the next bull run. And at first I was horrified. I was like, what? Like, how can, how can it be 13 or 8 to 18 cents? That is just nonsense. Kind of terrified for it for a few moments, but actually, you know, quickly did the numbers in my own head and came to the conclusion that, that that's just kind of utter nonsense. So before you have a heart attack and start panicking, let me talk to you a little bit about why I think the, uh, the price in the next bull run will be significantly higher than 13 to 18 cents. By the way, if you want to look more, much more closely at the numbers, obviously you can watch this BitBoy Crypto video, but also I would highly recommend watching this video by Dr. Wookie. Dr. Wookie is awesome. I highly recommend watching all of his content. He's amazing. Has a, an even deeper understanding of Gala than I do. I like to think that I'm I'm pretty well versed on what's going on um, in the Gallery ecosystem, but Dr. Wookie is absolutely insane. And uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's just an awesome guy. He breaks down all the numbers and basically a lot of the numbers that he that, that they were talking about on the BitBoy channel, they're getting the, the circulating supply and the market cap and things, they're getting it all wrong. And I think that that's partly due to um, coin market cap itself being wrong. But Dr. Wookie, I trust what he's saying much more. And he's talking about, you know, getting, if you, if you, replicate the numbers strictly with what they're saying it was something like i don't know if it's 64 or uh, 40 45 cents to get back to, to its previous market cap but obviously you expect more money to be flowing into the ecosystem and you know each cycle the total market cap of crypto in general goes up quite significantly and so if you factor that in then um, you know it is realistic for gala to be going to 90 cents or a dollar you know i've been quite optimistic about a one dollar um value to the for the gala token for quite some time i did express some concerns though recently with the reverse halvings that's happening where the ma the massive amount of tokens that are going to be distributed to node owners and so i'm less optimistic than i than i was i was i was pretty confident for a one dollar or one dollar twenty even price for the gala token but but now i, I am a bit a bit more pessimistic but i certainly think that getting back to the all-time highs and get pushing into like 80 90 cents uh, i still think that that is definitely achievable so this 13 to 18 cents for me uh, i mean that just just is ridiculously low 
Um, I mean, even so, like, let's just have a look at the price today. You know, the price of Gala, we're talking at uh, two, two and a half cents, something like that. Uh, right now for Gala. I mean, even if it does only get to say 20 cents, that is still a significant return. And so I, I just think it's a, it's a great price right now. And it did actually go back to the two cent mark, which I think is absolutely insanely good. But the reason that I think you can't just look at, you know, the market cap on on its own. And like one thing they do in this video is they compared the market cap of Gala to like the market cap of Epic, Epic Games, for example. Okay, so where's that where they talk about Epic Games? Here they're saying, well, Epic Games has got a market cap of 32 billion, and you know they obviously have a huge amount of a, a big player base, uh, very very active communities. So, so you know, Epic Games are are huge, and you know, Gala Games is nowhere near them in terms of in terms of size at the moment. Perhaps they will be one day, but he's saying that well, it would be ludicrous to to say that they could have a significantly higher market cap than Epic Games. But the market cap of Epic Games. That's based on stock value, not on a token. And you can't compare a token market cap to the market cap of a, a traditional centralized organization. The main reason for me that you can't do that is because that there are reasons to hold a token. And you know they, 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 these are utility tokens. It is not just a case of, let's say like with a stock, you hold a stock in order to, you know, you want some price appreciation as the company grows, but you also receive dividends. There's no way that you can actually use stocks in an ecosystem like you can use gala in an ecosystem for trading nfts for example and you know gas fees etc so it's like it would be like saying well okay what's the market cap of epic games okay you could add that and then you say right well you know potentially right well it's also a layer one so what's the market cap of ethereum okay so you could potentially add that as a layer one solution okay and then they've also got music and film okay so what is the market cap of netflix plus the market cap of spotify etc so you know, there's a lot more going on in the ecosystem. First of all, it's that ability for people to use the token. People that are, people that use Epic Games don't go and buy like Epic Games stock, for example, because they want to buy in-game items in the Epic Games ecosystem. They use fiat currency to buy their upgrades and their skins and all that sort of stuff. Whereas with Gala, if you want to buy something in the ecosystem, the chances are you're going to need some Gala for gas and you're going to need some Gala for that transaction. And there's also going to be other use cases as well. I mean, one thing Bitbender's talked about is the potential for people as an incentive to kind of hold uh, Gala long term if you if you kind of lock it up almost like a staking contract but rather than getting Gala back as your staking reward you will earn NFTs over time and that for me the potential for that is absolutely huge I would love the idea of locking up some Gala for three months and getting an NFT at the end of it for a game that I'm really passionate about and I can see people going for that because it's not actually, in theory, it's not costing you anything. It might cost you something if Gal, the price of Gala depreciates over time, but that works both ways. You might actually gain value in your Gala and end up with an NFT, you know, which would be an absolute win-win. So there's, a, there's so much more, firstly to the ecosystem, but also to the use case that you just can't really, you can't really predict where these tokens are going to go based on like traditional finance sector and tradi uh, traditional gaming companies market cap. So I'm still super bullish on you know what I think Gala, what the, what the price of Gala is going to do. I think it's going to uh, have another huge, huge run up. I don't think it'll be quite as like fast. I mean, this almost felt like it happened overnight. It happened so so quickly with this massive, massive run up uh, in in late 2021. I don't think it'll be quite as quick, but you know, slow and steady is actually better. It probably will be better for the ecosystem overall if it can just do a nice gradual climbing from here back up to you know 80 90 cents uh, hopefully a dollar as well and also you know the price has come off quite a lot since they made the announcement of going into mobile gaming and how they acquired all those mobile games with their millions of users and so on so i actually think the price now is looking pretty good having said that it sounds as though the chain is still quite some months away from like a full launch and that makes me think that with the higher emissions going out to the node owners, unfortunately, this, this kind of slow attrition that we've had, this, this, this slow grinding down over months and months, I think that, that that could even accelerate so that we actually start to, to trend down even faster just simply by the, by the fact that there's a lot more tokens going out in circulation. Not everyone's selling them. Many people are sitting on them, but... Those that are selling have more to sell. And so I think that short term, we could see a, a bit more pain. And, and, and to me, I see it as, as an opportunity because I'd love to be buying it again at one cent. 
I would absolutely love to be buying Gala at one cent, but I think when we get back down to two cents, um, I will start accumulating some more at that point in time. But we just don't know exactly when all of this is going to kick off. I mean, it could be that, that we're already now at the point where this is this is the low point and we're just going to start building upwards from here. But I, I do just suspect that if the chain does take months, which I think it still, still may do, the ecosystem can't really get going until that happens. So I'm kind of taking the bet that Gala will continue to lose value over the next few months. But that doesn't mean long term, it doesn't look great. You know, this is the thing where I think people get so upset by, by the current price of Gala rather than looking at, at the medium to long term. If you've got a short term outlook, then phew, um, I don't think it's, it's great at the moment. But I think as long as you're medium to long term, everything looks wonderful. And, you know, on that basis, the lower the price goes, then uh, the more you can you can scoop up and the more that you can profit in that medium to long term as things get going. Talking about Gala Chain, uh, one thing that uh, Bitbender kind of let slip recently is that they've already got some projects that uh, have agreed to build on top of Gala Chain, which is absolutely amazing. I kind of knew that they would they would be pushing this, and and I, you know the way that they've done things in the past, they've always got really big partnerships. One uh, project that he talked about specifically was um, a social media platform, which is going to be built on Gala Chain which is excellent. This isn't an existing social network. It's not like, say, Twitter, for example, um, you know, being added to Gala Chain. It's going to be a new Web3-based social media platform, as far as I know. Not guaranteed to have, like, instant users or instant traction. But I think that the idea of, you know, these applications being built on top of Gala Chain is really, really exciting for the whole ecosystem. And I'm keen to see what Gala do with it as well. I think that there's real opportunities there. You know, in the gaming space, there's a lot of uh, really popular social media networks which are kind of mostly dedicated really to uh, to gaming like like twitch for example and i think that this could be a really um, interesting add-on and a different an exciting way for the community to kind of come together in gala games and to grow the community and to and to get to drive that community engagement as well so that's super exciting news gala music continues to do really well and all the drops that they're doing seem to be selling out really quickly and i think they're continuing to to attract really good quality artists as well if you've not checked it out i would highly recommend going on here and listening to some of the tracks it's it's free to use and, and there's some really talented artists on there i just think they're doing a really good job actually whether or not they'll get mass adoption still remains to be seen but i think they're doing all the right things quite honestly and i'm definitely enjoying uh, listening to to the artists that they've brought onto this platform so far the actual as a music player it's not it's not great and and they know that um so i, I believe there's a new app being launched fairly soon i think that's in the next and maybe within the next couple of months that they've got a new app application that will just make it a bit more user-friendly, a bit easier uh, and more sort of fun to use to be able to, be able to create playlists and things like that. Um, so that, I think that'll be a big improvement for them uh, and that is due very soon, as I say. So I'm really pleased with, with the way Gala Music is going. Gala Film as well, you know, there's some exciting stuff happening over there, although I don't think it's happening quite as fast as with kind of Gala Music, but then things take a lot more time when, you, when you're producing movies and, and TV shows and things like that. But still looking uh, good on the Gala film side. One other thing to mention about actual Gala games, I think this is just for the games, I'm not sure if it, it maybe it's across the, the entire ecosystem actually, but they, they're talking about a new website for Gala games as well. And it will include apparently a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, which is really quite an exciting development. I don't know if this will rely on the chain. Maybe it will, so maybe it'll be it'll be held back for that, or maybe it's something that they can roll out um, more quickly. But that's a, that's going to be a great feature to allow people to trade their NFTs peer-to-peer. -peer. But also potentially, I, I like the idea most of all of being able to rent out NFTs to the community. So that was a quite an exciting bit of news, but I don't know just at the moment exactly how that will work. So I'll keep you posted on that one. But I think, you know, overall, Gala Games still still looking really good. And I think that the, the price having dropped back down, for me, I just see it as a, as a good opportunity uh, for accumulating more. So that's Gala. Um, Hello One, things are looking quite exciting over there at Hello as well, because the Killer Whale show is now actually going into production, I believe. So they're actually already starting to film it. Looks like it's going to be a, a really interesting um, show. I can't wait to actually watch it. They've also been announcing more of the actual whales. Um, so quite a few big names have been announced, uh, one of which uh, is Ran. Uh, Ran the Man from Crypto Banter, which is you know a really, really great channel. So he was a good addition, I think. And yeah, I mean, I think it looks like a really balanced team. There's, uh, there's also some more... 
there's two I think still to be announced so uh, still more news to come on that but it's exciting to see that show finally going into production I can't wait to actually watch it all and so yeah I mean Hello's looking uh, looking good overall um, and there's not much else happening I don't think uh, you know there's still the games that can be played the arcade uh, looking good I'm looking forward to some news on their their app where you know they're bringing all of this together you know they've got this idea of cryptotainment that's going to be done mostly through like a mobile app where you can play games and you can watch the shows etc um, I would love it if that's available by the time that the killer whales show goes live but I, I don't know if that's the case I'll try and get an update from them and um, perhaps even see if I can get Paul back onto the channel to just talk about um, how things are looking and what else we can expect throughout uh, this year and going into next year as well the price has actually kind of come off uh, a little bit and actually went down to around two cents or two and a half cents at one point but it has it has recovered and um, I suspect once this show goes out I mean all, all the influencers are going to be talking about hello you know they've got such a big combined following between all of the the different whales that are actually on the show itself but then obviously when the show launches I expect there to be quite a lot of um, talk and hype just from the wider community and even outside the crypto community um, for this new TV show. So hopefully that will drive um, a lot of attention and new people into, into the token and into the ecosystem. And then it can continue to be basically one of the best performing tokens uh, of the year so far. Still looking good on, uh, on Hello and I think they're going to have an exciting end to the year. With Weave, um, we're just coming towards the end now of uh, what's been a very intense few months with our accelerator partner, Hypernest. It's been a, an absolutely wonderful um, accelerator program. We've learned an awful lot. We've been connected to an awful lot of people. We've had group sessions and some very, very, very good one-to-one -one sessions with some extremely experienced people. And yeah, we basically just looked at the, the, the entire business across all different aspects um, you know, that you can possibly kind of scrutinize a business from the sort of product itself to the route to market to you know the marketing to the tech side to security to you know seeking investment and all and basically you know a full 360 degree look um, at the business itself and we've come on a long way we've we've had some new ideas we've innovated a lot we've got some exciting um, sort of announcements to make um, of things that we've developed throughout the kind of Hypernest uh, Accelerator program. And, you know, you can see even just by the way that we now want to talk about and explain the project. We're refining the language so that we can explain it to people better going forward. So now we describe ourselves as, as DeFi made easy and we're going to keep refining um, that language and, and making this kind of like our core theme throughout the whole Weave ecosystem. We also uh, made an announcement to say that we did really well in another hackathon, which we got the silver prize from Polyhedra, which was really nice. It's just nice to get uh, you know recognition for what you're doing and what you're building. And I think probably the, the main thing now uh, that you know now that the um, accelerator program is done, you know we've been working on two things uh, very hard throughout this year. One has been investigating the exploit, and the other has been the uh, accelerator program. And now that the accelerator program is coming towards a close, our focus now will be um, still continuing to investigate um, the hack and to monitor the situation there, but much more so on launching and um, getting both the product fully live and the the new token out to um, you know to those existing token holders and obviously to uh, encourage new token holders and new community members uh, to come and join us on our on our journey with Weave. So um, this is going to be a much more kind of exciting and active time now and um, we're looking forward to making some announcements. We're, we're putting together at the moment kind of what the roadmap will look like. There's still a few finishing pieces really that we need to do with Hypernest. Um, we don't know the exact kind of time scales for everything. Um, but we are definitely uh, putting together that roadmap now for um, for launching and our growth plans, etc. So keep your eye on uh, the Discord channel, and I'll obviously keep updating you here on my channel as well. But uh, I'm I'm personally really excited by where the project has has got to now uh, with all the new innovation that we've had, and uh, and also just excited to get the thing launched and live and start to to grow. I think the timing will be will be good for this as well. As we start to go into the crypto space in general just just being more ready for for these new projects and these new ideas and for and for hopefully rapid growth as well as we go into next year so there's a lot to come with weave and i'm looking forward to uh, to showcasing all the progress that we've made um in due course so that's the latest from weave 
let's have a look at uh, yield nodes next and and decenemy so the last really that we heard from the yield nodes team was that there had been a delay on the nfts that they're quite a few months late in releasing those um, they obviously want to get the legal aspect of it right i'm not sure how they will uh, they will pacify that quite honestly because i'm just not sure how they will get past the, the the fact that the nfts may well be classed as securities but i'll be i'll be keenly keeping an eye on how that happens i think as as i mentioned last month the main thing for me is not so much about the release of the nfts i think those will come in due course anyway it's more about understanding how this decenemy economy will actually function and one thing that they have said is that they've got economics university professors actually working on their tokenomics to make it as robust as possible and I think that's going to be necessary because I think it's fine to have assets pledged through this decenemy and um, you know they have had a lot of assets pledged and there will be I think a lot of revenue coming into the ecosystem but you know for me I just still can't understand how that then becomes sustainable you know basically you're going to all that new money that comes in you're going to be dumping tokens uh, dumping on those people that, that are you know that are providing their assets I don't see how you make it a sustainable model unless there's demand uh, more so on kind of our side, I suppose, as the investors. Like, how, how can we create demand, other demand for the token, so that it's not just a case of money coming in, buying the token, and, and then the master noding just basically sells, you know, all the all the tokens, all the gains that have been made, it just gets dumped on, you know, and then how do the asset providers then cash out as well? You, you can't have, you know, both sides cashing out all the time. It just it's just not sustainable. So, very very tricky uh, economy, I think, to balance. But um, they they're assuring us that. They're close to having it finalized and that the white paper is due very shortly. So um, that's that's the key piece for me will be the white paper. I'll try and do a dedicated video on it. I may even see if I can get Steve on uh, to talk about the white paper and how the economy will work in detail. Because I think that's that's this, that's the most important factor. And that will determine whether you know I see like a longer term future for the project. So not much else really to talk about on yield nodes and decenemy. It kind of remains um, in that same position of you know, hopefully they're, they're, they're building the platform that they need to build in the background. And, uh, and uh, I, you know, they're sure, they assure us that the, the white paper is being worked on. So let's see how things progress with that. Illuvium, last of all then. So Illuvium still in open beta. Still, again, not, not a huge amount to report on that. Um, you know, the price is still looking uh, uh, not great uh, overall, but, um, but, you know, doesn't seem to be going much lower at least which is which is kind of reassuring and overall i'm still optimistic i still think that they're building a great game and a great ecosystem but man you know let's let's get this thing live let's get it launched they, they launched a store recently but i was thinking that was perhaps around the nfts but this is more like clothing and things like that basically uh, that, that that the store is for what matters now for me is uh, is getting the the game going live get it out of beta get it live and get the ecosystem uh, growing and, and the hype going again though this might be you know the timing might end up being quite good when this does start to get going if it is a few more months away yet it could actually work quite nicely in terms of bullish sentiment just generally in the crypto space and then the conversation coming back around around metaverse and web3 gaming so to some to some extent i think it could it could be a good thing with these delays but it's obviously difficult when you're holding a token that's that's just performed so badly it can be a, a little bit painful but i've not done anything i'm still just staking and uh, holding my tokens i'm probably not going to buy more tokens for for the ecosystem i feel like i've got enough exposure to it already but uh, i think for the, at the price where, the, where where it is now i think it's pretty good value because i mean if, if it does go back to all-time highs it, it'll be a huge uh, run-up and huge returns to be had but I, I just don't know whether it will and i don't i don't look at it as closely as i look at something like gala games where i feel like i'm, I'm much more confident in in what that will do and the returns that will make i'm not as sure with, with illuvian but uh, i'm just hold, holding and hoping at the moment that uh, that they have the, the success and the launch that that they've been building up to i think as long as the game uh, is is a success there's cer it's certainly on enough people's radars i think that there will be a lot of hype around it i think there'll be a lot of people playing the game and a lot of people speculating on on the token and stuff once it does go live but whether it whether or not it can go back to its all-time highs I, I don't know it just it just seems like a long way to go uh, to get back to all-time highs and i just don't know if the ecosystem is is strong enough whereas when I do compare it to something like Gala Games, you know, I do know that Gala Games have been building so, so much. I mean, they really are building huge amounts um, that, that should all go live, 
you know, pretty quickly that will that will drive that 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 growth. I mean, just just plus even just purely on the user side. Don't forget that Gala has acquired now the gaming company that that already have millions of of users. So to some extent, they've already kind of um, secured their future to to a certain degree. Whereas we're still speculating with Alluvium, will it be a success? You know, will will they get millions of users? We don't really know, and they also don't have the, the same kind of scope of you know having a layer one blockchain of having you know so many different games i think i think gala games are at 50 games now uh, they've got music they've got film they've got all sorts going on in their entire ecosystem whereas illuvium is you know mu- a much smaller proposition albeit i think the game does look absolutely fantastic but yeah i'm just i'm not quite as confident in fact i'm nowhere near as confident that illuvium will get back to its all-time highs uh, compared to something like gala but uh, but still Still bullish and still hopeful that uh, they'll have a really strong run in the next bull market. So I think that concludes everything for this month. I know it's been a bit of a longer one. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm hoping to have a bit of a chance to do a bit more video content going forwards. There's a few tokens that I've got my eyes on um, that I, I really think you guys will like. And I still want to do my my portfolio of tokens that I think will have massive growth potential in the next bull market i've just been so so busy with weave this year i've just not had much chance to focus on anything else but things are getting a bit easier there and i've got a bit more time to focus on some other things which uh, which i'm really excited about so thanks again for watching this video i appreciate you all and bye for now